to my own PC, and today I'm making another edition of my retro game series. In this series, uh, I, I talk about how to remake games from the past. And um, in, t in today's tutorial, we're going to be using Game Maker to recreate Space Invaders. And um, in the beginning of my retro games videos, I always like to start out with some history of the topic. So, today, as I said, we're going to talk about Space Invaders. And Space Invaders was made by this guy, Tomohiro Nishikado. Let me scare this. He started making this in 1997, and he drew from several inspirations to make it. First off, I wanted to make a game like Breakout, where you, you could interact with the environment by breaking, breaking blocks, only he wanted to involve shooting as a game mechanic. And he's also, he's also a big fan of science fiction stories, such as Star Wars, and, and H.G. Wells' World of the Worlds. And, and that's where he got the idea for, for the aliens in the space theme. He even has strange dreams about children being attacked by aliens while waiting for Santa. So, so he basically accumulated all of these, these different inspirations to create, well, to create what we know today as Space Invaders, or Space Monsters as he initially called it. He, he named Space Monsters because there was a popular song out, out, out at that time called Monster by, by Pink Lady. <laughs> And he, he um, initially tried to na name, it, name it after that song, but his superiors ended up painting Space Invaders. One of the core ga game mechanics in Space Invaders is that the aliens move faster as you, as you kill more of them. A fun fact is that this is actually a glitch of sorts. Nishikata noticed that um, if there are more aliens on the screen, the time it will take to draw them on the screen took longer because the processor would, have, processor would have to work harder to render them all on the screen. Rather than going through the effort of redesigning the hardware and, and reprogramming it, he decided to leave that as a, as a game mechanic, which turned out to be a, a good decision because it, it became one of the things that the game was mo most well known for. Having that things get progressively more difficult as the game went on was a fairly new concept at the time, which was one of the things that made the game revolutionary. So, the game ended up being released in 1978, and it was manufactured by Taito. And the game was a big hit when, when it was released. It, in the first four years, it made two billion dollars, and it almost caused economic meltdown in, in, in Japan because it used up so many hundred yen coins that they had to start making more of them to keep the e economy stable. To clear all this. In 1979, Space Invaders expanded from Japan over to the U.S. The manufacturing also switched from from Taito over to the Midway section of Bali. One thing that a lot of people don't, uh, most people assume that it was always um, in the form of a big upright standing box. But the fact of the matter is that when it was created by Taito, it was actually in the form of a cocktail table like this. Which is um, where you look down onto the game and the game's built into a table rather than an upright box. And when um, Midway started make, making them, it was in the upright box that we um, know well. So now I'll just clear that. So um, now we're in 1980, and um, Space Invaders has moved on to a couple of home consoles. So Atari um, has uh, taken advantage of, of, of how popular it is and held a co competition for it. Now this was one of the first um, competitive video game events, and it was really a big hit. It had over 10,000 participants and it was spread over several different cities. Here's a here's a picture of how how it, um, how the tournament would have looked like, and that's as as an example of, of how um, big and popular the game is coming. Some other uh, um, phenomena that started to occur was doctors invented, invented a new diagnosis called um, Space Invaders Elbow or Space Invaders Wrist because so many people were coming in with wrist problems or elbow problems because they were playing Space Invaders so much, and it became so addictive that that um, both England and Japan tried to ban Space Invaders for its addictive tendencies because people, people weren't coming to school and that kind of stuff. So from there we move on to what it, what it has lived up to today. It was um, re-released for several different consoles, the, including the Atari 2600, the Atari 400, the Atari 800, the Atari 5200, the NES, the SNES, the Wonders One, the VG Pocket Kappa, and the iOS devices. There are also many sequent, uh, sequels released um, for for several different devices and and, and recently a discount with a with the re, with a sequel for the X for the Xbox Live Arcade and now it's a public icon that's used as a cultural symbol of that time period and is recognized it's recognized by everyone. So now after all that awesome history, let's move on to the tutorial. So today I'm gonna try something a little bit new. 
Um, a lot of things that people have trouble with, with programming is that they try to tackle the tasks that are assigned all at once. A lot of people who take it in college um, come across this problem and then they'll give up on programming because they try to tackle the problem all at once and they get stressed at the immensity of the problem every time they do it that way. So a good uh, strategy is to split up into smaller bite-sized pieces so that you can uh, accomplish problem step by step. In this case the problem is creating space invaders so we're going to so I'm going to um, split sort of the different steps and we're, we're going to follow those steps and then maybe if you have something wrong at the end you'll be able to um, identify what, what happened wrong uh, based on these steps that I'm, that I'm showing you. So step one we're going to take care of the movement of the player easy enough. Step two we're going to take care of the movement of the alien which is one of the the trickier things in Space Invaders, it's one of the more important things. Step three, um, we're going to take care of having a player shoot, which is a sp pretty simple process. Step four, we're going to have the alien shoot, which is a slightly more complex process. Step five, we're going to add lives to the player. You can't have a Space Invaders game without lives. And then step six, we're going to add barriers, which is um, sort of a newer, newer thing. And then step seven, we're going to add the bonus spaceship that, that floats around every every once in a while. And then step eight, we're going to add score as a little bit of a polishing aspect to finish off the tutorial. So that's how this tutorial is going to run. And um, on the screen, I'll show you like the minute times of where you can go if you miss a step or something like that. It'll make it easier for me too when I'm when I'm helping you guys if you have problems. So um, I have all the sprites here. I got. I tried to make them look as much as like the original alien um, aliens as possible. I, I uh, pixel by pixel. I tried to copy them. So um, some of them are animated. Or actually, let's, let's go, through, go through them one by one. So I have the three aliens here, three alien types, and they all have multiple sub images because they're all animated. So that's that. And. Um, so this is the aliens, and I got the bonus spaceship over here, and I got the player, and two bullets, bullets for the alien, and bullets for the player, and I got the barrier up here. Uh, I did the barrier a little different than I did in the actual game. In the actual game, if it hits on the right side, it gets damaged on the right side. If it gets hit on the left side, it gets damaged on the left side, and that's a rather complicated process, so I decided to just make it, um, like, just in general being damaged. So that's that as probably one of the only things I did different from the original Space Invaders. If you wanted to make it like the original Space Invaders, you could use surfaces to add add textures to specific spots. And if you want to make it so you can shoot through those spots, that's even trickier, so okay. So I'll be putting these all in the in the description, a, a link to all these sprites. And if they're animated like like the barrier has multiple index, then um I'll have them in a strip, so you can uh, when you once you've opened this, you can click File, um, Create from Strip or Add from Strip. Not sure, but anyway, that's how you add the animated ones. And then um, you want everything that can be shot or shoots needs to be centered. Have to have the origin at the center. So that would that would be um, the aliens, the player, and the two bullet types. All right. So now let's move on to the tutorial. Step one is player movement. So We'll just call the first object OJ player. Assign the sprite to the player sprite that I have. And then in the step event, we'll take care of all of the movement. So this is ba pretty basic. This is a code that I use in a lot of my tutorials, but the only difference here is that it's going to only, only go from left to right. There's no up down movement for the player. So if keyboard check, if VK right, if the right button is being pressed, then we want it to move to the right. In other words, we want our at four pixels to be added to our x value. And then the same thing for the left. If keyboard check, vk left, it's, if you're pressing the left button, you want to move to the left, then we want to move to the left. So x minus equals four, take four away from the x. Okay, so that's simple enough for as far as player movement goes. And that's step one completed. Now we'll, we'll take care of our alien movement. So I'm going to create obj alien. And this particular alien isn't going to go in the room. We have three different types of aliens, or three normal types of aliens, I suppose. And all three of them are programmed exactly the same way, but their sprites are a little different. So we're going to put all our code in this alien, and then we're going to create more aliens, and we're going to set this sprite as the parent, or set this object as the parent, so that those other aliens will get all the code from here. So I'll just call it, go ahead and create a group for all our aliens. And this is the parent alien. 
and this one is one of our normal aliens, OBJ Alien 1. This could be the one that shows up in front, and I make the sprite Alien 1, and I make the parent our parent alien. So th this one will get all the code from our parent alien. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, OBJ o Alien 2, and set the sprite to 2, and its parent is set to Alien, and duplicate this one, OBJ Alien 3, its parent its sprite is alien 3 and its parent is alien again. Alright, so now we got our alien set up. So now there's a few um, variables we're going to set up in, our, in the creation event of the player. So I'm setting it up in the player because there's only one player and I can't, setting can't be set for the aliens and I, only want, and I only want there to be one of these variables. So that's how I'm setting it up in the player. So first variable is global.alien count. Now as um, you probably know, Space Invaders, the um, the speed of the aliens depends on how many aliens there are. So aliens there are, and it's fairly important that so it's fairly important to keep track of how many aliens there are. That's what this variable is for, and I'm making it global because it's not really specific to any any alien. It's a global variable, so I want it to be accessed by all the aliens, and um, and it's not specific to angle anyone. So that's why I use global variable. Next one is also made global, so global dot left equals true. So this um, represents whether the aliens go left or, or not. Um, the reason why I did uh, like this instead of numbers is has to do with data capacity. So if it's true, it's going to left. If it's false, it's going to the right. If you want to le learn more about data capacity and that kind of stuff, you can watch some of my Java tutorials, primitive data types. So there we go. That's our two variables. And now we'll go into the creation event of our alien. And we will set an alarm. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to set an alarm in here. So alarm zero equals whatever, and then this the alarm is going to go off, and then the alarm is going to be reset like that over and over again. So this alarm, alarm will serve as a loop, and how how often that alarm goes off is going to show how fast the aliens go. So that's why it's important how how what value this is going to be. Alright, so what we want to do here is we want the alarm zero to be set um, based on our alien count. So the higher the alien count, the um, slower you want to go, and the lower the alien count, the faster you want to go. And it just so happens that um, making the alarm zero, the making the amount of time between the alarms, making that amount bigger makes it go slower, and making that amount smaller um, makes it go faster. So it's a direct relationship. So we could come up with some sort of linear um, relationship and make it go just a little bit faster for every alien that gets killed but the problem with that is that every, so people wouldn't notice um, the change because the change would be so um, subtle that people would notice the change and part of the reasoning behind it is that people will notice it getting faster so the way we're going to do that is we're going to make it get faster every five aliens or so and I'm going to use um, uh, a slightly long piece of code for this but it's not too complicated trust me so so first thing we want to round down is something divisible by 10. So if it's 45, we want to round down to 40. If it's 39, we want to round down to 30. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to grab the excess that we want to take off. And we're going to do that using mods. So I'm going to type down global.alien count mod 10. So this will um, divide it by 10 and give us what's left over. So if it's 25, well, I'll just do a few examples. So um, 25 mod 10 is equal to 5 because if you take 10 off over and over again from 25, what you get left is 5. Um, 36 mod 10 is equal to 6. Uh, 12 mod 10 is equal to 2. Oh, um, you get the point. I think I'm going to make a tutorial just about, just about mods at some point because I tend to use them in my tutorials a lot. Alright, so that will grab the excess that you want to take off. So then we'll just go ahead and take it off. So we'll put that whole thing in parentheses and I'm going to type down global dot alien count minus that alright and then so once we've got all that we start at 45, 45 aliens so therefore the with just this we would end up starting with uh, this this being 40 so with the longs you set to 40 that means that they'll move every second or so and we want to go a little bit faster than that so we're gonna just divide that by 5 um, 5 is just number I found worked for this case scenario and then one last thing, um, this will run from, what, 8 
down to all the way down to zero. And if, if it's at zero, it'll freeze. And if it's if it's a little higher than zero, it'll go extremely fast. So we want to go. Um, we want to add like a buffer so that it won't freeze and it won't go extremely fast either. So I'm just going to add two, which which works. So um, don't think I just camp with this right off the bat. I I went back and forth and experimented and, tr and tried to see what what worked. Next step, we want image to be equal to zero because we want to control the animation ourselves. And left equals true. Um, we have a global at left, and we have a left for the individual alien. You, I'll explain wh why that is in a second. So now let's copy our alarm zero thing, and head over to alarm zero our event. And so now we can replace this with the code we just thought up. Moving right along. So this is where the movement is going to happen. Movement is going to happen. So we're going to say if global dot left equals true, x plus x minus equals four. Otherwise x plus equals 4. And there we go. So, um, we're going to have another system for change. So when it gets to the edge, this global left is going to change to um, to false. Or when it hits the left edge, it's going to change to false. If it hits the right edge, it's going to change to true. So we're going to um, control that in the step event. But um, if, if I were to uh, have that controlled like that for every alien, then it would, um, they would sort of all think with their own um, mind, and they, w they wouldn't look organized. So that's why I devised this plan for each alien to have their, their own left, um, their own their own left thing, and that way we can control when they go down as well. So that, uh, we can uh, control when when the left variable changes. So if left, if the left variable of this particular alien is not equal to global dot left, then we want y plus equal eight. And then we also want left to be equal to global dot left. You can also look at this is if the if this particular alien is not going in the same direction as the pack, then that means that it's time for us to switch directions. And because of switching directions, we want it to move down a row, and we want it to move in the same direction as the pack. That's basically the idea behind this line of code. Okay. Now, one more thing. We want to animate as well, so we're, we're going to say image index plus equals one. So we're going to add one to the image index to make it animate. And th that is all for that that step. And uh, now we're going to control when the pack changes direction. So the step event. Um, if x is less than sixteen, then we want global dot left um, to equal true, or sorry false. So if it's all, all the way on the left side, and then we want to make sure that left, go left equals false because we want to start moving right. And if x is more than 224, then global dot left, left equals true. So this is global, so it applies to the entire pack of aliens. So only some aliens need to reach the far right or left side for the ch direction of the aliens to change, which is the way it is in the in the in the game as well. And then we have one more thing. If y is more than 200, so if it's down a certain amount, I don't want want the room to restart because at that point the player is lost and needs to have all the aliens killed before they reach that y value. So that there is the end of step two. Now moving on to step three, and step three is shooting for the player. So we're gonna go and take care of that. Okay, the way we want to work is when we press spacebar, I want to shoot. So I'll go into uh, keyboard. Space bar, space. There we go, and attach code. So, um, we want to cr when we press space bar, we want to create our bull object. So, instance, instance, create x y obj bullet because we have um, or sorry, obj bullet player. Yeah, that's what I called it. So, because we have um both the bullet and the player, since we have both origins set to the center. This will create it at the center nicely, and uh, remember this name because that's we're gonna have to name our bullet exactly that for it, it to work. And now, um, there's one, one other thing I want to take care of. Um, I don't want him to be able to fire too fast because if he can just fire like a machine gun fire, then we can just take all the aliens, no no problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new variable called fire that that represents whether they, whether we're able to fire or not. So type down. So before we shoot, we're gonna type check if fire equals true and then if fire equals true we want fire to equal false after it's shot and we want alarm 
zero. Yes, zero is e to equal ten. So, so alarm zero will set um, fire equal to true again after it's been set to false right here. So, um, this is this alarm is a third of a second. So, when we fire, we'll have to be able to re shoot it three times a second, which is still pretty fast, but it's not overpowered like it would be if you could just hold in the button and and machine gun fire. So, we'll head over to alarm zero, and all we want to do in alarm zero is type down fire equals false true. There we go, true. Maybe more tired than I thought. Um, yes, true. Okay. And um, so now that's all we need to do for creating the bullet for the player. And now we'll, um, oh, actually, there's one more thing. In the creation note, we need to set fire equal to true so that the variable is defined. That, that's all for that. So now let's go ahead and create a bullet. So we're calling it obj player bullet. And we'll go ahead and give it the sprite for the bullet player. You know, I messed it up, didn't I? It's bullet player. There we go. That was a close one. And, um, so in the creation event, we just want it to move up. So I'm going to type down v speed equals negative 8, which is oh, negative 8, which is an upward direction, and that's a good speed for it. And, um, now, uh, when we collide with, uh, our alien object, since this is the parent of the other aliens, it'll apply to all the aliens, it's not just this one. So, when that happens, we want, um, with the other, with the other object involved the collision, in this case the alien, we want that object to destroy itself. So we want this code to um, be executed within that object, instance destroy, so that object will be destroyed, and we want to destroy ourselves as well. And one more thing, we want to decrease the alien count by one. So that way start, the aliens will start moving faster because that's what the alien count is for. And then one more thing, this is sort of just um, an extra thing, just for, uh, technicality. Um, when it is outside the room, we want it to destroy itself as well, because then we know it's not going to come inside the room again, and we're not going to interact with it anymore. So we want it to just destroy itself, so that way it won't be taking up memory on our computer. Alright, so that is OBJ Bullet Player. Okay, that was step 3, shooting for the player. And now let's cover step 4, shooting for the alien. Okay, so this is... We're, the concept's sort of the same, but it's going to be a little, little bit trickier for the alien. So, in the creation event, we're going to need to have a fire variable as well, just like we have for the player, to make the shooting, um, we'll use it to limit the shooting, and, um, we're going to need, need another one, front, and we're going to equal false. So front is going to represent whether the alien is in the front of the pack or not, because if it's, if it's, um, further behind the pack, we don't want to shoot, because if it would shoot and it's further, further back, then, um, it would, uh, hit the aliens in front of it, which we don't want. So now let's move on to our step event, and let's add, add some code to check whether we're in front or not because um, that's kind of important. So, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to check the four places in front of us, because there's going to be, um, the way I'm going to set the aliens, it's going to be five rows, and so, at, for any one alien, there's there can be a maximum of four, four rows of aliens in front of it. So we're going to check all four rows, and if there's no aliens in any of the four rows, then we know that we're in front. So, if not, place meeting, x, y, plus 16, obj, alien. So 16 is um, the distance between the rows, and that's just the way I'm going to make it. So then I'll, I'll copy this, type and and, and then check if not place meaning plus 32. And and, there's no aliens at 48. I'm just doing 60, 16, um, 16 pixel interval, intervals here. And and, uh, 64. Yes, that's right. Okay. So, that's a little bit long. I think I'll just enter. There we go. So, all, all this is our condition. We're just checking for the four places um, below our, our alien to, to see if there's any aliens there. And if there's not any aliens there, then front is equal to true. Otherwise, front is equal to false. Alright, so then we can move on to our alarm zero event, which is where the, the shooting is going to occur. So I'll just, I think I'll make a tag here, shooting, because this is all the movement, or comment, I guess. Yeah, this is all movement, this is all shooting. Alright, so we're, we're going to check for several things. First off, is it um, in the same 
region as a player from a horizontal perspective. So we want our x x value to be close to that of the player. So if the absolute value of obj player dot x minus x is less than five, so this is the difference between um our x and the player's x value, and I do the absolute value, so it'll come out with a positive value, so that way I, it'll be easier for me to check the distance. And if it's with, within 5, then um, we're able to shoot. Okay, so next thing. And fire equals true, just like with the player, we have this fire variable to um, limit the amount that the aliens can shoot, so that way they can't machine gun fire at us. And front equals true. We want to make sure the alien's in front so that it's able to shoot, so that it's um, allowed to shoot. It doesn't shoot the guy in front of him. And then one last thing. Um, even with with the, this being set to true, the, the aliens will be shooting a little bit too often for it to be a, a, an easy game. It'll be really tricky if, if if these are the only conditions. So we're gonna make another random condition to make sure they don't they don't um, shoot every time they they step. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to say random 7. So this will choose any number between, um, I think, 0 and 7. Yeah, 0 and 7. So it could be decimals as well. So I'll say 1. So that way there's a 1 in 7 chance that um, it'll, uh, it'll do this if all these other conditions are met. Okay, so then first thing, fire equals, actually, no, it's also, uh, first thing, I'll create the bullet. So instance create... Uh, X Y again. If that creates it at the center, because we have the origins of um, the bullet and the aliens at the center, and OBJ bullet alien. We're gonna have to create that object and call it just like that. Case next fire equals false, so that way we can't shoot for a little while, and we're gonna set alarm one equal to thirty. So there's, so it won't be able to shoot at the, at the same rate the player is able to. So alarm one. So in here we're gonna, gonna go ahead and set fire equal to true so it's able to fire again. Now let's go ahead and create our bullet object for the alien. Create obj bullet alien. And we'll go ahead and set the sprite which is that bullet. And this one's gonna be a little bit um, more cut and dry. Uh, just in the creation event I'm going to set the it's V speed equal to 4. This is half the speed of the aliens, making it easier to evade than our bullets would be. And I'll be that's it. We'll cover the human death in just a second. But um, it just occurred to me that I haven't uh, cr um, tested the game out. I haven't created any rooms yet. So, And it's important to test the game out as often as possible so that we know all the, all the code works. So let's we'll go ahead and test it to make sure that everything is going fine and dandy. First thing, I'm going to create the room, change it a little bit to make it look more like the original game. So I'm going to make it the width 240 and the height 279. That's, that's about the same um, dimensions that they have in the normal game. I'm going to make the background black because we're in space and the background's black. And I'm going to go in the objects and I'm going to go and add our aliens. So alien 3 is the back row. Um, let's see how do I do this. There. So, they're 16 apart, and I made them roughly in the center. I can't make it exactly in the center, but I made it a little bit to the right, because I know they're moving to the left, so this is roughly in the center. And now, uh, so there's one row at the back, back of the back aliens, and then there's two rows of the other ones, so I'll just go ahead and make those like so. Then the last one... And then we have to go and make the player there. All good. Looks looks like a looks like a uh, space marriage game already. Now let's go ahead and test it. The alien count does not exist. Huh. Interesting. OBJ player. I have global alien count up here. 
but it wasn't able to see it in the alien object. Oh, you know what? I think I know what it is. Um, because I added these to the room first, they spawned first. So I want to actually add, make sure that the player is added before the aliens. I bet you that's the problem. Because the global alien count variable is defined in the player object. So add these real quick again. Holding in shift, by the way, makes this process slightly quicker. Alright, here we go. The aliens are moving. The aliens are shooting. The aliens change direction. I can shoot, and I can kill the aliens. And now let's see if they go faster. If I shoot more of them... Yeah, I can see them going faster. Let's just oh yeah, they're definitely going faster now. Alright, so there we go, already got a pretty decent um Space Invaders game. We got a few more things we need to add though. Let's see, we still got to take care of the player lives. We've got to um what else? Barriers, score. Yeah, that, there we go. So, um that's we just concluded step four. So and there's eight steps, so we're halfway through. So um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go OBJ, we're going to bullet alien. There's we there's a few things that we didn't cover in this object yet. We're going to go in the collision with OBJ player event. I think yes, collision with OBJ player. And now, um, what we want to do is there are a few things we want to do. So, um, if you've ever played the Space Invaders game before, what, what happens when, um, whenever you the player is killed, the game freezes for a little bit, the player is invisible, and then the player respawns, or actually, the player respawns center of the screen, and, um, then the game moves on from there. So, um, when we apply it, we're going to set the player to invisible. And it, when, it, when the player is invisible, that means it's dead. So, first off, we want to check if it's visible, because we don't want to the bolts to hit it if, it's, if the player is already dead. So, if... If um say if other dot visible equals true, other being the other object in the collision and the other object in this case is the player. And now we're gonna type to other dot live minus equals one. Live is, is what I'm gonna call the variable for lives. The reason I don't do lives because lives is a built-in variable and I try to stay away from them if I don't plan on using them. And now other dot visible is equal to false because it's dead, we want to be equal to false. And then um other dot alarm one is equal to fifteen. So this will be the one that goes off. Which once it finishes, it'll make the player visible again, and it will respawn in the center of the room, and it'll make life start happening again. Um. So and then after that, instance destroyed. The bullet needs to be destroyed. There you go. All set. And just like with um, our other bullet, once this, if this goes outside the room, we want it to be destroyed so it doesn't take up memory. So outside room instance dance destroyed. I believe that's everything for this bullet. Okay, so so like I said just now, if the player turns invisible, we need it's dead. We want all the game to freeze. So part of the game freezing is for all the bullets to be destroyed. So instead of that, I'm gonna type on if uh, obj player dot visible equals false then I'm going to destroy myself. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing in the player bullets. So that way all life stops. So if step event if obj player dot visible equals false then instance destroy. Now I'm going to go into the alien object. So we want to stop moving if the player is not visible. So the way we do that is, see all this code right here that involves moving and shooting? We're going to make that happen only if the player player is visible. So everything except for this alarm, because if we include the alarm, then 
uh, if it goes into this and the player is not visible, then this alarm won't be reset, making the players freeze permanently. So I'm going to type down if visible equals, oh, yeah, sorry, if obj player dot visible equals true, then do this code, and I'm going to end it right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and tab all this out so that um, it's more organized. And if you have GameMaker 8.1 or higher, you can just simply select it and press tab. But I have a GameMaker 8, so I have to tab each line individually. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. There we go. So, moving right along. So now we've talked about um, visible and lives with uh, with everything other than the player, and the player in the end of the day is most important. So, first create the variable live equals three. Again, I'm and lives is a built-in variable, and I don't want to use that since I don't want to use the built-in um, functionality. So that's why I call it lives of lives. And then if live is less than zero, if live is less than zero, meaning that meaning that it's dead, it's out of lives, we want the room to restart. And now we want to in the draw event, we want to create somewhat of a HUD to show how many lives we have. But before we do that, I'm going to create a new font because the standard font doesn't look very Space Invaders and kind of ruin the feel of the game, in my opinion. Um, okay, so we'll just call it font one. That's, that should be fine. I'll just call it font zero, though, since that's the default. The only reason it's called font one, font one, because I created a font here earlier. Um, so the font I chose was OCRA Extended. Let's see. Let me know if you see it. There we go, Ace OCRA extended. Size 12 will be just fine. And I'm going to OBG player. I will go into the draw event. And I'm going to add code. Okie dokie. So, um, whenever you go in the draw event, it overrides anything that's being drawn already. So, before we do anything else, let's redraw the player. So, draw sprite. Which sprite? Our sprite, whichever sprite we have right now. What sprite index, what subage, whichever image index we have right now. XY, whatever XY is. Simple as that. Then, there's a few things we need to, need to take care of. So we're going to draw text right now, and in order to apply our, our um, new font, we got to put some code that down. So I'm going to type down draw, set, font, and I'm going to type down font, zero. Next thing, the default color for font is black problem is the background is black, so we won't see it unless we change the color. So we have draw set color to uh, something other than black, in this case do white. I guess you can do something else if you want, but I'm going to do white. So now I'm going to go in and draw out the HUD for the live. So I'm going to draw uh, text x and y values are 16 and 256. Sometimes I'm able to uh, think up code off the top of my head and see if it works, but in this case, um, these numbers I caught by going back and forth through the game and seeing if they're placed exactly where I wanted it. And 16256, it, that worked. So I'm going to type down live, which is going to be the caption for the, for the lives. And then I'm going to draw the value of our lives. And I'm going to type down some numbers again that I, get, that I managed to find. And and the variable live, so it's going to type down the variable live, and this will show up a little bit to the right of lives. Okay. Just tested it, and I realized I forgot something. In the bullet alien, when we collide with the player, we set its alarm to 15, so that will come back to life. But the problem is that I forgot to do that, so I'll go ahead into alarm 1, and I'll type down visible equals true. And in addition to that, we're going to move it to the center of, of, the, of the room, or center in the horizontal direction. So x equals room width divided by 2. Now it should look like this. And that, my friends, concludes step 5. Now step 6, which is having the barriers. This is something, this is something completely new. So I'm going to create an object called obj barrier. Simple enough, and I'm going to give the sprite the barrier sprite. So let me go back to the let me show you the sprite real quick. 
So the way I have it set up is I have it become a little bit more damaged every step of the way, and its highest image index is 3. So this is important. Highest image index is 3, and the, Im the image index can represent the damage. Because the image index represents the damage, um, we're going to have to create a variable in the creation event, and or not create a variable, but I'm going to set the variable image speed equal to 0, so that way it doesn't animate through those images. That's actually everything in this object, but uh, for um, our bullet alien, when it collides with our barrier, we want it to do something. We want it to, first off, we want to check if other.image index does not equal 3. If that turns out to be true, it does not equal 3, then we want to get further damage. So image, so we want its image index to increase at once. So other.image index plus equals 1. There we go. But if that is not true, if this is not true, that means that its image index must equal 3. And if its image index is equal, equal to 3, then it's at its last legs. It's about to be destroyed. So we want um, it to be destroyed. So we're going to type down with other. That means that I want this code to be performed in the other object. The other object involved the collision, being the barrier. And um, what we want to do is we want to destroy itself. So instance destroy. By the way, uh, you might have noticed that sometimes I do other dot to, to perform things in the other, other objects. And sometimes I use this with other function-ish thing to perform stuff in the other object. The difference is um, I can use other dot for variables. But with, with this with other, I, I can do with functions or variables. So I'm forced to use this method whenever I want to work with functions. I could use this for variables as well, but frankly it's just easier to do it this way for variables. Fun fact. So, now you're learning something. Okay, last but not least, I want this particular bullet to be destroyed. So that way it doesn't wreak any more havoc. The barrier has done its job. It's held the bullet back. This bullet is destroyed. And now, I'm going to go into the bullet player. When this collides with the barrier, I don't want to just go right straight through it, but at the same time I don't want to punish punish the player by having the the um, barrier be damaged. So I'm just going to have it, the bullet destroy itself. And that is all for step 6. Moving right along, only two, two steps to go. Next step is the bonus. The bonus alien, the spaceship that comes through at, at top um, every now and then. So. That we're gonna call OBJ bonus because it's it's a bonus you get a lot of points for. It. We'll cover points later, but so set the, so create the object, set the sprite to bonus, and in the creation event, I'm going to set the H speed equal to one, and then if it moves outside the room, I want it to be destroyed. But I can't uh, use the outside room event because it'll be spawned outside the room. So I'm gonna handle it a little, little bit differently. I'm gonna go into step event. And I'm going to say if x is more than the room width. So if if x has reached the far right side of the room and surpassed it, then we want it to destroy itself. And I believe that's all for the bonus. Uh, I think that's all for the bonus object. Yes, it is. Okay. And so now we want to take care of spawning. So um, I want this to happen at a constant rate, happening in one place. And a good thing place to do that is OBJ player. So I'll go ahead and go in there. So in the creation of the player, I'm going to set up a new alarm. So I'm going to set alarm to equal to uh, 360 plus random 90. This is another one of those things that I experimented with, made it higher, a little lower, and then changed the randomness to see what seemed to work best. So 360, that's about, what, 10, 12 seconds? So it'll take at least 12 seconds for it to... Um, between the times when it spawns. And then we're going to add a random 90, which is another 3 seconds, so it, it can range between, it, it'll spawn every 12 to 15 seconds, which is about about right. So let me go to alarm 2. So in this code, first off, I want to um, reset the alarm so that it'll uh, um, start another timer that can last 12 to, 12 to 15 seconds. Before it'll um, before it'll respond another bonus alien. So every time this alarm goes off, I want to create another one of those bonus aliens. So instance create. I'm gonna want to create it outside the room, which which is a negative x value. It's so negative 32. That'll make it a little bit to the left of the room, and the y is gonna be 32, which is a little bit um, on the lower side of the room. 
and then the object will increase OJ bonus, of course. And this should this should show up via low if you created the object. Ugh, my voice is dying. I'm gonna get some water. All right, that's better. Um, and that, my friends, is all for step seven. That is all for our bonus alien. Now we're gonna move on to the last step, which is adding score, which is a little bit of a bonus feature, which is nice to have because then people can track their progress and all that. So we're gonna take care of all of the score in OG Bow Player. So when they clatter, the alien want to change the score. And uh, the way they have it set up in this base major game is the ones closer to the player you get less points for, and the ones farther away from the player you get more points for. So I want it to be different for the individual alien objects, but if I, um, let's say I, I do the collision for alien 1, um, any, any code I put in here will override the code I put in this, oh, in this OBJ alien object, because this, um, this uh, alien's parent p parent is OBJ alien, which was a benefit when we, when we created this collision. But if we if we want to make in individual stuff for this one, it'll completely override OBJ alien. But we don't want to do that because if we want, let's say we want to make changes to this bit of code here, um, if we decided to uh, copy and paste it to a each individual um, alien collision, then if we want to make changes, we have to change in each one, which is not good for coding. That's um, called hard coding. We want to avoid that. So I'm going to change this to um, user defined user zero, and then in our alien object, we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is call event user zero. So it'll call this event in the beginning of each one. So that way, if we want to make any changes to this code. We um, uh, could just go ahead and make change to this code, and that way it'll change it for each of the aliens because we called that um, event already. Okay, so then we got want to do what's individual to this alien, which is global dot points plus equals ten, and then that's for alien one. For alien, oh, want to duplicate that event? For let's see, collision with alien two, we want to add twenty. And duplicate that again. Collision with alien. Collision with alien three. Want that to be yet a little bigger, which is thirty. And then collision with alien bonus. Notice that I didn't duplicate this time. We're not going to call that event because this alien handled it handled differently. When we collide with that alien, we want global dot points plus equals one hundred. Have I been using global, global points this time? This whole time? Yes, I have. Okay, good. Um, we want to perform a code similar to this for OBJ bonus, but we don't want the alien count to be affected because it's not one of the aliens involved with the pack. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, go into bonus, paste it, I'm going to take away this alien alien count line. And I'm going to... No, that's about good. I think that that's about right. I'm going to think of which probably perform this points thing before the event user because it's being destroyed in event user and that could possibly end our entire code line. So I'm going to put do the points first. Let me just change that real quick. Alright. And I believe that's all for the score. Now we want to add it to our HUD so that we can actually see the score. It's a small point in added having score if you can't see the HUD. And I need to add it to the to the creation of the player. Go about points equals zero. Sorry, I forgot about that. Okay, draw it. Okay, now we add it to it to the HUD. It's going to happen very similar to the to the way we did the, the live. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it. We just want to uh, change the Y values because these are displayed at the bottom of the screen. I want the score. To be displayed on top of the screen. So I'm going to have it do, do display at 16 instead. And the caption is going to be score and the um, points can be global dot points. That's the variable we, variable we want to display. Alright, that, that's we have finished the game. Now let's play it and enjoy our creation. Except for the fact that I forgot to add the barriers. I'll head over to the room and I'll go ahead and add a couple barriers. 
barrier. Let's see. Um, how should I do this? That's one, two, three, 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 four. Does that look about right? Hmm. Um, it's not entirely symmetrical, but it's close enough. So there we go. We've added our barriers, and now we're gonna play the game. Our finished Space Invaders product. We can something we can be proud of. All right. So there we go. We have Space Invaders. The bullets don't collide with the with the barriers. The barriers get damaged. Um, they do get damaged. Don't they? Yes, they do get damaged. As I shoot the aliens, they our point goes points goes up, and the aliens move faster. If I shoot the bonus thing over there, I missed it. Oh, I have to watch next time. Um, so yes, aliens move faster. As I shoot them, they change directions. We have we've accomplished all kinds of stuff in this tutorial. Okay, this time I'm gonna get him. There we go. I gain points when I sh hit the bonus dude, and he dies. As you saw, the bonus guy respond at the live score. Yes, we've we've accomplished a lot. The barriers get destroyed. Now let me just. Uh, kill the rest of these aliens, shall I? Hopefully I can pull it off before the game ends. And I lost. Oh well. Now we know how that works. So that's all for this tutorial, guys. I hope you found it very helpful. I'm sorry it took me so long to, um, to make this. I think, um, somebody first mentioned, somebody first asked for this like six months ago, so I'm sorry that took so long, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, or found it helpful at least. And I hope this doesn't turn out to be too long. I, I, I can imagine that this recording was taken forever with all eight steps. But, yeah, I, I'll see you guys next time. Please, please subscribe. I, I have more tutorials like this coming. Um, and um, I'm going to stop talking now. I'll see you guys next time.